गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अवोटिक वेल एनाटॉमी एंड ट्रांस एसोफेजल इको कार्डियोग्राफिक व्यूज ऑफ अवोटिक वेल द कंपोनेंट ऑफ अवोटिक वेल एपरेटिस आर अवोटिक वेल एन्युलस अवोटिक लिफ्लिट्स अवोटिक कमिश्योर्स एंटर लिफ्लिट ट्राइंगल्स थानियस ऑफ एलसेल्वा एंड थानियो ट्यूबुलर सम्शन आउटिक एनुलस इज नॉट अ सिंपल रिंग बट मोर लाइक ए सेमिलोनार क्राउन लाइक स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज डिमार्केटेड बाय द हिंट्स ऑफ लिफलेट आउटिकस दे आर द थ्री आउटिकस राइट कॉर्नरिकस लेफ्ट कॉर्नरिकस एंड द नॉन कॉर्नरिकस द नॉन कॉर्नरिकस स्लाइटली लार्जर देन राइट लेफ्ट कॉर्नरिकस इज द स्मॉलेस्ट एंड इन नेम फॉर द ओरिजिन ऑफ द कॉर्नरी आर्टरीज द राइट कॉर्नरी कस विज लोकेटेड एंटीरियरली एंड द लेफ्ट कॉर्नरी कस इज सिचुएटेड लेफ्ट पोस्टीरियर एंड द नॉन कॉर्नरी कस विज राइट पोस्टीरियर ईच कस इज फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी मिलीमीटर टॉल एट द सेंटर एंड इट्स थिकेस्ट एट इट्स यूज शेप्ड अटैचमेंट टू आउटा द फिगर इज शोइंग द आउटिक रूट द आउटिक रूट एक्सटेंड फ्रॉम द बैथिलर अटैचमेंट ऑफ द आउटिक लिफलेट विद इन द एल वी टू इट्स पेरीफरल अटैचमेंट एट द सैनियो ट्यूबुलर जंक्शन द लोअर टू थर्ड सर्कम्फेरेंस ऑफ द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द आउटिक रूट ऑक्युपाइड बाय द मैमरिनस सेप्टम और रिमाइनिंग वन थर्ड इज इन फाइब्रिक कंटिन्यूटी विद द एंटीरियर लिफलेट ऑफ द माइटल वेल Uh, you can see here these three leaflet are extended or attached throughout the length of the aortic uh, uh, root so uh, these three leaflet uh, form the three prong coronate uh, with the hinge from the supporting ventricular structure and form the crown like ring so you can see here the base of the crown is a virtual ring that is formed by the joining the basal attachment of the aortic valve leaflet so uh, and this plane represent the uh, inlet from the alveot into the aortic root the top of the crown is uh, is formed by the sinio tubular junction and this plane represent the outlet of the aortic root into the ascending aorta the uh, semilunar hinge of the leaflet then crosses the another uh, ring that is the anatomical ventricular arterial junction so the essence of this uh, uh, anatomical arrangement uh, is that uh, the uh, this uh, aortic leaflet are supported in a crown like fashion into the aortic root uh, there are the several features of the aortic leaflet or aortic cusp as you can see in this figure uh, that uh, it shows the free margin of the aortic leaflet and the uh, center of the uh, free margin there is the thickest portion that is known as the nodulo parenteus this nodulo parenteus is the point of contact uh, uh, during the diastole uh, the uh, thin portion on either side of nodulo parenteus known as the lunula uh, this lunula is the uh, region of coaptation on the leaflet and the lower one is the hinge point or the base for base of the leaflet Uh, now coming to the commissure uh, the attachment of the cusp to the aortic wall are the commissure unlike the mitral valve there is no continuity of the valve tissue at the commissure instead the cusp insert onto the aortic annulus at the thickest commissural margins and now another component of aortic valve apparatus is sinus of valsalva in this figure you can see the uh, the three aortic cusp are associated with pouch like dilatation uh, or bulges that is known as the sinus of valsalva now sinus of valsalva has many important function uh, now what happened during the diastole uh, there is a significant pressure are uh, generated across the aortic valve uh, that will cause um, the, that will lead to the stress uh, over the leaflet so in if there is a intact aortic valve apparatus so uh, it will distribute uh, distribute this stress from the leaflet to surrounding fibrous structure So here, uh, so here, uh, aortic wall. Uh, here, the sinus of valsalva plays a very important role in leaflet closure by distributing this stress. Uh, apart from that, uh, sinus of valsalva prevents leaflet from making contact with the aortic wall during the systole. Um, a space is maintained between the leaflet and the aortic wall uh, that we, uh, that causes uh, leaflet rapidly. Uh, that will allow the leaflet to close rapidly at the onset of diastole. Uh, in addition uh, sinus provide reservoir of blood for developing vortices 
as you can see in this figure um, uh, during the uh, uh, during the late systole uh, is uh, sinus valve salva provide uh, reservoir of blood so vortices are developed and these vortices are moved toward the ventricular arterial junction at the late systole when the velocity of uh, blood flow when the blood flow velocity are started to decline so this uh, vortices uh, to move toward the ventricular arterial junction that it prying the uh, outival leaflet for the closer uh, during the for the diastole now coming to the interleaflet triangle and their relationship to the mitral valve and the membranous septum as you can see in this figure uh, there are the three triangular extension of the lvot that reach to the level of the sinotubular junction that is known as the interleaflet triangle and this interleaflet triangle uh, represent the area of communication with the pericardial space so uh, the, this two uh, in the, this two um, uh, interleaflet triangle that that is bounded the uh, non coronary cusp are in fibrous continuity with the fibrous trigone membranous septum and the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve uh the uh, interleaflet triangle between the non coronary and the left coronary leaflet is a part of the area of the fibrous continuity because of the automatical curtain as you can see here in this figure this is the automatical curtain between the non coronary and the left coronary cusp uh the, that can be seen from the lvot so uh the the knowledge of this uh, anatomy is very important because the uh, uh, inadvertent placement of the aortic valvular process is too low within the alveot may impinge on this anterior leaflet of mitral valve and may impair its uh, function uh, interleaflet triangle located between the right coronary and the non coronary aortic leaflet is confluent with the membranous septum now coming to the fibrous trigone Uh, as you can see uh, here, the aortic valve is wedged between these two outer uh, uh, atrioventricular valve, that is the mitral valve and the uh, tricuspid valve. Uh, in relation to aortic valve, mitral valve is located uh, posteriorly and to the left, and tricuspid valve located inferiorly and to the right. And the uh, these two atrioventricular valve is abut on the posterior inferior margin of the aortic root. Um, the uh, The aortic valve is the center piece of the cardiac skeleton, and it is positioned thirty degree in horizontal plane and forty five degree in the median plane. Uh, now coming to the relationship between the aortic valve and the conduction system. Uh, in this figure, you can see the septal leaflet of tricuspid valve, uh, which separate the uh, membranous septum into the two component. One is the atrioventricular component, and the second one is the intraventricular uh, component. so uh, within the right atrium atrioventricular node is located within the triangle of coach this important triangle is demarcated by the tendon of todaro the attachment of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and the orifice of the coronary sinus the apex of this triangle is occupied by the atrioventricular component of the membranous septum the atrioventricular node is located just inferior to the apex of this triangle adjacent to the membranous septum so knowledge of this anatomy is very important because the pathology involving aortic valve may lead to complete heart block or the intraventricular conduction abnormalities uh, the av node atrioventricular node continues as the bundle of his piercing the membranous septum and penetrating to the left through the central fibrous body as you can see in this figure the left bundle branch exiting below the interleaflet triangle uh separating the uh, left coronary cusp uh, non coronary cusp and the right coronary cusp and it descend along the septal surface of the left ventricle so uh, this has important implication with the potential to induce uh, conduction abnormality after the aortic valve replacement now coming to the uh, transesophageal echocardiographic views of the aortic valve uh, first one is the mid esophageal av aortic valve short axis view Uh, this view is obtained uh, by rotating the multiplane angle to 30 to 60 degree uh, from the mid esophageal four chamber view uh, in this view you can see the uh, uh, right cor uh, non coronary cusp which is lies superiorly and along the uh, interatrial septum uh, the right coronary cusp lies inferiorly and the left coronary cusp lies right and it's po uh, and it's uh, uh, it pointing uh, in the direction of the left atrial appendage so this view permit planimetry of the uh, aortic valve orifice uh, we can evaluate any congenital abnormality of the aortic valve such as the bicuspid aortic valve 
and we can do the qualitative assessment of the aortic insufficiency uh, by the color flow doppler uh, if you if you slightly withdraw the probe from here so we can get the uh, right coronary artery and the left main coronary artery which branch into the left anterior descending artery and the left circumflex artery second view is mid esophageal uh, aortic well long axis view this view is obtained by rotating the multiplane angle to 120 to 160 degree uh, from the mid esophageal four chamber view uh, so uh, uh, you can see in the, you can see here uh, lvot uh, aortic well annulus aortic leaflet uh, sinus of valsalva sinotubular junction and the proximal ascending aorta so this view is useful for evaluating the aortic insufficiency with color flow doppler or systolic anterior motion of the mitral wall and the proximal aortic pathological conditions such as the aortic dissection and the aneurysm. Uh, next view is the mid esophageal five chamber view. Uh, this view is obtained uh, by slightly withdrawing the probe from the mid esophageal four chamber view uh, at 0 to 20 degree. You can see here the aortic well as well as uh, mitral wall. So we can detect uh, any pathology which is related to mitral wall and the aortic well. Next view is the transistric long axis view. This view is obtained by rotating the multiplane angle to 90 to 120 degree from the transistric uh, uh, mid short axis view. And this view is important because it allow or it provide optimal window for parallel Doppler beam alignment for the assessment of the flow and pressure gradient uh, in aortic stenosis or hypertrophic obstructed cardiomyopathy. Next view is the deep transistic long axis view. This view is obtained by advancing the probe deep into the stomach uh, and uh, antiplexing the tip. Uh, so we can get uh, this deep trans at 0 to 20 degrees. So we can get this the, uh, deep transistic long axis view. Again, this view is important because it provides optimal uh, Doppler beam alignment for measuring trans aortic valve and the LVOT flow velocities and it may provide an additional window for assessing flow through the muscular ventricular septal defect. In addition, uh, we can assess the LV apical pathology such as the LV thrombus or LV aneurysm. Thank you.